Hi guys, uh, this week we're going to talk about postbellum America. And if you see me kind of looking around, it's because I reference my notes when I do these videos. And I'm going to dive right in because I'm going to try and squeeze a lot in here. Postbellum America could be described as the rise of progressivism, which was a political economy um, ideology very similar to what we call national socialism. A gentleman by the name of Richard T. Eli was the driving force behind the rise and success of the political economy of progressivism in America. Um, a major academic shift in postbellum America took place and it's quite staggering. The, this academic shift influenced the political shift in economic thinking, which then drove the popular societal shift in economic ideology in the United States. This ideological and academic shift between 1865 and 1900 embedded what was considered a once foreign ideology, the state-directed economy, into the American psyche, the government, and American institutions. The progressive model of economics uh, is nothing more than a form of national socialism. None were more important or influential than Richard T. Eli. Richard T. Eli is hailed by the Wisconsin Historical Society as quote, a major figure in er American economics that played a primary role in establishing the University of Wisconsin's reputation as a leader in economics research and in the training of graduate experts in administration, economics, and state service. At the time, this rep reputation was highly controversial, and it was evident that Eli and the German-trained progressives uh, were attempting to institute a form of socialism or state-directed economy in the United States. In fact, Eli was charged by the State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Oliver E. Wells, in 1894 of teaching and supporting alien and revolutionary doctrines due to Eli's interest in socialism. As Eli puts it in his own writing, which is the focus of uh, two of his writings, um, progressives are altogether dissatisfied with the condition of society and share a common ground as political and economic reformers of bringing about socialist changes through a steady and prolonged radicalism. And that was in his uh, French and German Socialism in Modern Times, one of his earliest works in 1883. Uh, a couple years later, he would write uh, The Past and Present of the Political Economy, where he conveys that the political economy was a natural evolution from free market capitalism to one of state control through progressive experts. His denotation of classical liberalism and free market capitalism as the old way and the progressive statism as the new way of political economy is revealing. How influential was Eli? Well, Princeton's Frank Fetter in 1925 had an occasion honoring Eli that in the history of scholarship there could not be found a higher average of success and achievement than this little band of pioneers has attained. Indeed, 1880 to 1900, there was a revolution in higher education. Eli and his band of pioneers taught and led German-style research seminars, granted PhDs, and wrote as specialists for one another in over a half dozen scholarly journals, which they founded and edited. This first generation of academic progressives created two new American vocations, the professor of economics and the expert economist in the service of the administrative state. In 1885, the 31-year-old John Hopkins University professor stated that progressives should organize for the purpose of issuing a proclamation of emancipation from classical economics. By 1937, Eli had sold nearly a million copies of textbooks, second only in economic works to Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations. Eli's books were used in over 250 universities and colleges in the 1920s. That's what we have for this week. I thank you guys for watching, and I hope everybody has a great weekend.